Hello, everyone. Welcome to APH Virtual Excel, Excel, the great STEM campout. Hope you are all ready. We've got two wonderful rangers for you. We've got Ranger Carrie and Ranger Annie ready to get you going. So I'm going to turn it over to them. Have great fun. Three, two, one. Oh, hello there. I was doing my countdown to the great STEM campout. I am so happy to have you with us today live. I'm Ranger Annie. If you're watching this as a recording later, you can just participate with us too. We have so much fun stuff. Don't go anywhere, stay tuned. I have short brown hair, I have white skin. Some people say I have brown eyes and some people say I have green eyes. So I consider that hazel eyes. And I'm gonna turn it over to Ranger Carrie. She's your other guide on this trip to help give you an introduction to her. Hi guys, I'm Ranger Carrie. I will be with you all week as well with Ranger Annie. I have um, white skin also, probably a little bit tanner than Annie's. Um, I have dark brown hair and it's a little bit longer and my eyes are also a dark brown. All right, Annie, are you ready to take it away? Yes, Carrie, I am. Well, today we will start our camp with some silly singing. I hope you like silly singing. This will help tell us if you can hear our mics because you're going to have to depend on your guide. So we want to make sure you can hear us. Your mic should not be on at the time. Mic drop. That's what we like to call this. If you like silly songs, though, feel free to sing along with us at home. Or again, if you're watching this as a recording, don't let yourself miss out. Sing with us. Here we go. This song comes from a song called There Was a Great Big Moose. There was a great big moose. There was a great big moose. Who liked to drink a lot of juice. Who liked to drink a lot of juice. The moose's name was Fred. The moose's name was Fred. And he drank his juice in bed. And he drank his juice in bed. He drank his juice with care. He drank his juice with care, but he spilt it in his hair, but he spilt it in his hair. Now he's a sticky moose. Now he's a sticky moose. On the loose. On the loose. Okay, so did we pass your mic check? Can you give us a thumbs up if we check, if we passed your mic check? We call this a digital thumbs up. This week, we are going to some of America's greatest national parks for a camping trip. Hence, that's why it's called the Great STEM Camp Out. That's right, we are taking our beds outdoors. Hey, Ranger Carrie, have you ever been camping? Believe it or not, I have never camped in a tent, but I have been glamping a lot of times. And to me, glamping is when you get to stay in a nice hotel with air condition away from the bugs, which I hate. And then you have a nice shower. So although I haven't slept in a tent, I have been glamping. And I think we're going to talk about that this week. Am I right? You are right. But the last time I went glamping, it wasn't so luxurious. I actually had centipedes in my cabin. They were crawling on me in my sleep. So actually, I prefer to be in a tent. I like the sound of the woods. But the last time I was in a tent, I was about five years old. Okay, campers, we want to hear from you. Here's our question to start off camp. Have you ever been camping? Hmm, think about it for a second. Have you really ever been camping? Now we will use our chat boxes to respond. You can put a Y for yes or an N for no. We will use our chat box to respond throughout camp. So go ahead. Have you ever been camping? Put a Y for yes or an N for no. And if you're watching this on the recording, no problem. We just want you to think about that question as well. Be thinking. Have you really ever been camping? 
Oh, We're Ranger Annie. Moment. We see them coming in. Yes, we do. We have lots of participants. Thank you guys so much for participating. I see Y's for yes and N's for no. This is called our data. This is our information about whether our campers have been camping or not. I'm going to turn it over to Ranger Carrie to pull up our chat boxes and see if you put a Y for yes, you have been camping, or an N for no, this week is going to teach you about camping. So we have answers coming in. I see a few yeses. I see a couple of no. Caleb has a good answer. He says in, but my mom told me about camping. That's perfect. That is a perfect answer. All right, so we're gonna, we use that chat box. If you are still taking time to answer it, no worry. Go ahead and take your time to put your Y and your N. But this week, we're gonna talk about STEM. STEM is covering science, technology, engineering, and math. Today, we're going to look at technology and math. Math was always my favorite growing up, so I hope you guys are excited about this. I am going to show you guys our screen. We have already done two of the things, and we're going to talk about our first learning objective. So our learning objective is what we want you guys to learn today. So first off, we are going to create a graph of your experience, which is why we had you answer that question. So here is our graph. We're gonna talk about how many students have had experience camping and how many students have not had experience camping. So I'm gonna have Ranger Annie look in the chat and as she's telling me how many we have, we are going to make a graph together. Annie, can you start out and count up how many yeses we've had? Yes, Mila is a yes, that's one. Elijah oh is a yes, that's two. Okay, go ahead and fill it in as I count. All right, we got two on the bar graph. Lucas is a yes, that's three. Hildegard is a no. So we will save Hildegard, Hildegard's answer. Caleb is a no, so we'll save his. Luca is a yes, that's four. Frankie is a yes, that's five. And Marley is a no, so we will save that answer for the other side of our bar graph. So it looks like we have five towering, filled in slots to create our first bar. That makes me so excited. I feel like our yeses are gonna be able to give us some wonderful knowledge. And then I feel like our no's, you guys are gonna learn so much this week. So we are so excited. I am ready for the no's. All right, Hildegard is a no, that's one. Caleb is a no, but his mom told him about camping. So he has come prepared. And if you haven't, you're here to learn. And Marley is a no, so that's three. All right, is that all that we have in our chat box? That is all our data. Okay, so this is considered a bar graph. And as you can see, it makes a bar, which is why it's called a bar graph. So this is comparing two sets of data. It's, it's comparing how many students have gone camping and how many students have not gone camping not necessarily a right or wrong answer to this question. We are going to look at the yes column first. So as Ranger Annie was saying, we have five yeses. So I am going to write the number five over here where it says how many students have been camping. Five students have been camping. Now, when we look at our no column, we have three. So I'm going to write the number three over here on this side. We can use this bar graph to give us lots and lots of information. First off, we can tell which one is greater. Greater is just a fancy word for bigger. So looking at this graph, if I was to 
take my line or my pencil and draw a line right here, I can tell you that the green is taller. So we have more students that have been camping than have, than have not been camping. We can also say the number of students that have camping experience is greater than the number of students without experience. We also can figure out how many more students have been camping than the students that have not. An easy way that I like to do this, and I'll tell you a little, little secret here. On the no column, there are two empty dots and I put a star in there. So that's telling you that there are two less students that do not have experience. You can also subtract these numbers. If we took five and subtracted three, that would also give us two. So this is just one example of how we've used camping and math. We're gonna use another one this afternoon and I can't wait for, Ms., uh, for Ranger Annie to tell you guys about what we call a tally chart. I am sure you guys have heard of bar graphs, but we're gonna see if you guys know what a tally chart is a little bit later. You guys did an amazing job. We are so proud of you participating and we've thrown a lot of information at you. So let's take just a small second. We know you're seated. And I want you to do your biggest camper stretch. Stretch your hands oh, way up in the air. Reaching for those stars. Stretch them to the sides. You might even want to wiggle your fingers a little bit. If you're sitting down, you might even want to wiggle your toes. All right. Those of you that are watching this recorded, take a time just to stretch for a little bit. Help wake your mind up, keep it active so you can be ready to learn. Keep All right, Annie. Keep graph in there. I am okay, going to campers. turn it over to you. Thank you, Ranger Carrie. That was very guideful on our uh, ability to look at a bar graph and see who has been camping and who has not been camping. So rather you have a ton of experience camping or you have absolutely no experience camping, like me who hasn't been in a tent in 25 years, I'll let you do the STEM math there. We are gonna put our thoughts about camping together and learn about what it would be like to go camping at a great national park. That's right, campers. We aren't just talking about a little camping trip. We're going to look at some of America's best places to camp. All right. Speaking of learning and participating together, because we are a group this week learning together, did you know that cooperative skills, like the ones you just used to answer in our chat, so those cooperative skills and interactions with others, like saying, yes, I've been camping before, or no, I haven't been camping before, but I'm excited to learn about it. Those interactions with others are part of something called the Expand It Core Curriculum. Now that is some fancy language. If you haven't heard of the C, C, C for short, you can clap it out with me. We use those three letters. Clap it out. C, C, C. This is a specific curriculum that not only teaches us important skills, but these skills are for learners with visual impairments. And that's what brought us all here together today. You all have a visual impairment. So we will have to consider our visual impairments when we're talking about learning how to go camping. I'm glad that you're here to participate with all of us today for this learning. So this is a curriculum designed for you, and it's designed to meet your needs as a learner with visual impairments. Participating in our group discussions is social interaction, and that's part of the skills in the ECC. All right, campers, like I said, we're going to some of America's favorite places. These are national parks. National parks are run by the federal government. They are big places. 
people with disabilities get a free National Parks Pass. That's right, a visual impairment is considered a disability. So you would get a free National Parks Pass. Ooh, now I have your attention, don't I? Let me tell you how to get that pass because this is such important information. An access pass is available in person at a federal recreation site or through the mail using an application. Digital hands up if you've ever filled out an application before. Anyone filled out an application? I had to fill out an application to be here today. I bet your parents had to register you or maybe you helped register you for this camp. An application wants specific information. And in order to get this pass, remember this is a free access pass to a national park, you have to be able to prove that you have a permanent disability. So that would be your visual impairment. In order to prove this, you would need a statement from your doctor that would talk about how your visual impairment is permanent and how it has an impact on your daily life. Ooh, daily life is another area we'll cover in the ECC. So we're talking about national parks as our places to go camping this week, but you may also have state parks near you. I'm coming to you from the great state of Kentucky, or at least I consider it great. You're coming from the great state of wherever you're from. You probably have some state parks that are run by the state government near you. If they're run by the federal government, you have some national parks. So with this information, let's get our guided group started. Ranger Carey really showed us how to put together a bar graph. Now we're gonna work together to make a tally chart as she mentioned. Remember, this is a STEM camp. We're using science this week to talk about nature. We're using technology. Here we are in the digital world. If you're watching us later as a recording, you're also using technology. And today we're using math so that we can make pictures that are really organized to show our information. All right, so during this guided group time, we are gonna focus on learning objective two. If you're at home, repeat after me. If you're watching this later, repeat after me. I can compare and contrast national parks to choose one that suits my preferences. To break that down, compare means to look at how they are the same, and to contrast looks at how they are completely different. Your preferences are what you like, and we're gonna keep your preferences in mind about camping this week. Let's listen to a short video description of two of the national parks the ones run by the federal government. One is called Yellowstone, and one is called the Grand Canyon. To prepare us to watch this video, let's use some movement. Yellowstone is in the Northwest region of the United States. So the United States is our country. Ooh, let's talk about Northwest. If we were looking at a map of the United States, we would be looking on the left side, which would be the west. So you can use your hand to make an L. An L, and mine might look backwards to you from where you're seated, seated. but if you're putting your hand out in front of you to make an L, you should have your index finger up first, and then you should have your thumb at the bottom, making that uppercase L. That's your left hand. If you can make an L with it and it's an actual L, it's not backwards, that's your left hand. 
So on the left side of the map of the United States is the west. That's where the sun sets. And then we're going to look in the northwest. So we have to take our L and go. Remember, we're saying on the left. That's why it's an L in the west. We have to go northwest. Up, 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 up. I got to lean back so you can still see my hands. Up. We're taking our west hand up, and that is northwest. North is up. Everybody, stay with me now because we're going to move from Yellowstone, which was in the northwest, and it touches into the states of Wyoming, Idaho, and Montana. And now we're going to the Grand Canyon. We're going to still keep our left hand because we're staying in the West, but we're going down South. Here we go. We're going Southwest. Down, down, low, low, low. You hear my voice getting lower because we're going low. Southwest. And that's where we are on the United States map. Okay. So while we watch this video, I want your thinking caps on. And if you're watching this as a recording later, you're going to think along with us. Don't miss out. Okay, which one would you like to camp at? Really think. And why did you choose that? Think about the information you hear in the video to tell you which one you want to camp at. Here we go. Let's watch the video, Ranger Carrie. mosquitoes in the area in 90 seconds this simple but brilliant trick you can do tonight welcome to kids academy hello let's get started on the lesson parks are an important part of the community can you pause and turn on the captions there are homes for many trees and animals Yes, thank you for that reminder. So underneath the bar there, I see a CC for closed captions. There we go, we'll have words and sound. People like to visit community parks to relax, play, or have a picnic. A national park is much bigger than a community park. It has many natural wonders for people to see. People from all over the world come to visit national parks. Yellowstone is the world's first national park. The park is large. It's located in three different states at once, Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. So they have just shown a video and there is, they're showing some natural water. They're also showing some wild animals walking around. National Park is known for its geysers and hot springs, or fountains of hot water and steam. So this is showing a video of like a body of water, and it's got steam coming out of it, indicating that it's really hot. The Grand Canyon is a famous national park in Arizona. When rivers flow for a long time, they make a canyon or a deep narrow ditch in the land below. 
they're showing the mountains and then they're showing the water running through it. The Colorado River caused the Grand Canyon to form. Scientists believe that it took two billion years for this to happen. Biscayne National Park in Florida is not We're like gonna a stop park. it there. Because if you remember, I wanted you to think about whether you would go to Yellowstone National Park or the Grand Canyon, where we could see two billion years of rock formation. <sighs> That's a long time in history. Okay, so I'm going to remind you of our question. Our question was. Which one would you like to camp at? Hmm, Yellowstone, that starts with a Y. That's where the geysers were, the hot springs of water. There were also animals and grass and lots of bodies of water. Or the Grand Canyon, that starts with a G. That's where all the rocks were in the desert. Think about which one you would like to camp at. Why Yellowstone or G Grand Canyon and respond in our uh, chat box so that we will have our information for our tally chart. I'm seeing lots of answers coming in. You guys are doing an awesome job. Thank you so much for practicing the ECC skill of participation and social interaction as we come together and compare our preferences for camping and our experiences with camping. Okay, Ranger at Carrie, are the answers in? It looks like they are. I see that too. Okay, so let's use our data about our preferences to make a tally chart. But before we do that, I'm going to give you one more opportunity to answer. If you could choose any part near you, would you stay with Yellowstone or the Grand Canyon? Or would you choose another camping site? Again, I wanna see your preferences about camping this week because we want this to be very informational about camping. So if you would choose a totally different location, I want you to put an O for other. Go ahead and do that now. If you're watching this, Try to think about if you would go to Yellowstone, the Grand Canyon, or a different destination of your choice. I want to go to both of those because those are two places I have never been, and they are definitely on my bucket list. They are definitely some of the most popular national parks. Interesting. I see two others. Thank you so much for your opinions and sharing your preferences with us. That helps us really get an idea of who we have in our group here because we're gonna plan a camping trip together. Okay, let's start on our tally chart. Now, I'm going to encourage you to stay with me and watch as I fill in this tally chart. Actually, Ranger Carey's gonna turn it, fill it in as I talk because she's great with technology and that's part of our STEM camp. But if you're at home and you want to participate, I encourage you to go back and watch this as a recorded video later. And you can use either Legos, you could use your abacus, or any objects of your choice to keep track of our data. The thing about data or information that we put into a picture is we want to keep it organized. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. Okay, so 
the first thing I'm going to start with is Yellowstone. I'm looking for people who want to go to Yellowstone National Park for our camping trip. I see that Caleb wants to go to Yellowstone. There's one. So I'm going to make a vertical line that goes top to bottom. You can do your hand top to bottom. There's one. And I see that Donnie wants to go to Yellowstone. I see that Luca wants to go to Yellowstone. That's three. I see that Marley wants to go to Yellowstone. That's four, top to bottom. Okay, I'm at four. I almost have a bundle of five. I need to tie them together. So Elijah also said he wants to go to Yellowstone. I'm ready to put a line that ties my other lines together. It's going to go from side to side. Go ahead and move your hand side to side with your line there. Okay. So now we have five. Let's see if we have any more data. Hildegard wants to go to Yellowstone as well. There's six. I'm going top to bottom. Yanni wants to go to Yellowstone. Another top to bottom. And it looks like Angela, she wants to go to Yellowstone. We need a tally mark for her, top to bottom. Frankie wants to go to Yellowstone, top to bottom. That's another four. Let's see if we have an answer to tie together another bundle of five. Nope, that's all our data. So we have one bundle of five, which I can easily see that it's tied together with that horizontal line. Well, or you can use a diagonal line as Ranger Carey did. And then I have four more standing tall tally marks. So five and four make nine. Nine of our viewers want to go to Yellowstone. We're going to go in here and look for our Grand Canyon data. Again, we're making tally marks to fill in a picture of our data. Okay, Mila, she's going to get us started with one tally mark, top to bottom. Lucas is next. There's our second tally mark, top to bottom. And you can move your hand up and down with me if you're going top to bottom. Miko chooses the Grand Canyon. Top to bottom, that's three. Oh, and we have some really good information coming in here. And this is another example of participation that I like. Tally mark in Braille is dots four, five, six, no tie for braille. So you're just making dots four, five, six for every point you want to count. Okay, so there we have three Grand Canyon answers. Three is our total Ranger Carry. So it looks like more people would like to go to Yellowstone. But remember, I also gave the option to go to another park, which we didn't put the tally marks in here for. But that would have been two people who came back with, I'd rather go to a different place of my choice. So we've made two pictures today. First, we used math to make a, gra a bar graph. The bars tower tall, and they give us that sight of a bar. You can also make those in Braille.
because really you're just looking at the height of them. So you can do that with your fingers as well and feel the height of them. And we've also made a tally chart. Tally chart just gave us a quick top to bottom or the four, five, six to help us keep track of each point. So today we really shared some experiences about camping and we use those experiences along with relating our preferences because you got to choose Yellowstone or the Grand Canyon to what we learned to make pictures to show this. One picture had those towering bars. That was a bar graph. And the other used marks called tallies. Tomorrow, come back and dive in with us to make choices about our great camping adventure. We're going to use science and technology tomorrow to really talk about these parks. We want to know about the animals there. We want to know about the weather. Did you know that looking at our likes and dislikes is also part of that ECC? Expand it core curriculum. That's a curriculum just for you. Remember, if you haven't heard of the expanded core curriculum, it is a curriculum designed and curriculum is really just a list of skills you want to have. It is a curriculum designed to help teach learners with visual impairments. The reason we're all here together learning. This is a curriculum that teachers pull from and that you should get involved with so that you know what you need. So knowing your likes and dislikes is showing knowledge of yourself. That's called self-determination. All week long, we are going to look at our self-determination and see how we will form our preferences around going camping out in nature. Remember I said we're taking our beds outside or after this week, you may still say, uh-uh, I'm staying inside with some air. <laughs> it's very hot in Kentucky today. I like being in the air conditioning. Tomorrow, I want you to feel free to wear your favorite sun hat as we start to talk about packing our essentials for our adventure. I'm going to give you some time to think right now. Think about one thing that stuck out to you like a porcupine in today's lesson, something you learned that you didn't know before. That's something great to talk to someone at dinner tonight, whenever you're having dinner. That's a, that's a great thing you can share around the table. Now, what thought is still twinkling in your mind like a wandering star? Remember, we're going camping. I got to make camping references. What's still twinkling in your mind like a wandering star? Something I didn't answer for you today or Ranger Carey didn't answer. Maybe tomorrow we'll build on our thoughts when we come back. We're going to use our bodies for more movement. As you can tell, I like to use groovy fingers. We're going to use our bodies for more movement to learn about the nature and the animals. Right now, I'm going to turn it over to Ranger Carey to tell us about our extension activity for today to give us a camping challenge. All right, campers, this one really, really, really excites me. Hopefully you have good weather. If not, if it's raining, if it's kind of cold where you are, don't worry. Put on a raincoat, grab an umbrella, and get ready to go outside. You guys are going to go on a nature scavenger hunt. That's right. You're going to go outside. Does it have to be outside of your yard? No, absolutely not. Can it be outside of your yard? Yes, you can completely go somewhere else if that's okay with your parents. But what we want you to do is we want you to go outside and find some items. Now, all of this, all of these directions are in your extension. And there's also a video of, um, of, of one of our little helpers that will show you this. But what we want you to find is a stick 
And the really cool thing about this is your stick might look totally different than somebody else's stick because guess what? There are people on here from everywhere. Don't worry. If you're watching this on the recording, we want you to participate this in this as well. So we need a stick. That's our first thing. The second thing we want you to get is a rock, a stone. And if you're thinking, I don't have any of those, that is okay. Think about something that you might find in your environment that's hard. It could be anything. The second thing we want you to do is get two, two different kinds of leaves. That could be, in Kentucky, we have lots of trees and we have lots of different type of trees. So I was easily able to find two different leaves. But if you guys don't have trees where you're located, why don't you look for a plant, something like that? You know what? One of our campers just brought up a great suggestion. If you live somewhere that doesn't have rocks, a seashell. And if you bring a seashell back, I'm going to be a little jealous because I would love to be at the beach right now. So, so far we need a stick, a rock, a shell, something hard, two leaves. And then guess what? Your next item can be something of your choice, something that is found outside, and maybe it's something that's unique to where you're located. So that is what we want you to do for your extension activity. I would like to show you, we have something fun. If you guys are able to, we um, are encouraging you guys, and I'm going to share it with you so you can see, to upload this information, take a video of yourself, and upload it to what we call Flipgrid. The Flipgrid link is in your extension activity. And when you get to it, it's, go, it's named Virtual Academy Great STEM Camp Out. So since we're gonna be together for five days, we have those labeled and you would wanna choose day one, nature scavenger hunt. We would love, love, love to see the videos of yourself doing this nature scavenger hunt. And the really cool thing about this is others will be able to view this. If you're not able to do that, it is completely okay. But if you are, we highly encourage that. And guess what? We're gonna pick one person's video from each day to share it with the group tomorrow. So we'll pick somebody from today and we'll share that tomorrow. But I do wanna talk to you about something that is really, really, really important. It's okay for this activity not to be perfect. It's okay if you make mistakes. There's gonna be some activities later in the week that are going to require some building, some constructing things. And I want you to know that it does not have to be perfect. Nothing we do is ever completely perfect. And something else that's really important, if you guys need help, it is completely okay to ask for help. But what we want you to remember you are the boss. This is your activity. So if you have to ask your mom, your dad, a family member, or an adult at your house for help, that's fine. But we want to make sure that you're telling them exactly what you need help with. We don't want the adult or somebody else doing this for you. So what we want to tell you guys is go outside, enjoy nature, have fun finding these items, Keep them in a safe place because we're going to revisit those later this week. We are so, so excited to see your, your videos of what you have found and the rest of the, the activities this week. One last thing I want to talk to you guys about. Each day we're going to do a rating. And a rating is how well you think you did today. That's gonna help Ranger Annie and myself know if you guys are having trouble, if you need help, or if you guys are like, you know what, we are getting this, we're having fun. So as soon as I put the slide up, I want you to use the chat box, chat box one last time and we're gonna rate ourselves on how well we did today. So here's our scale. Did I get it? That is our question. So if you totally get it, you could teach it to others. I want you to drop a three in that chat box. If you think I need a little more help or practice, I want you to drop a two in that chat box. 
And if you're thinking, oh my goodness, I need help. I am totally lost. I want you to put a one. And if you're at home, be lost because it's just day one. Exactly right, Ranger Annie. And if you are at home, I want you to think about this too. I want you to rate yourself on how you feel today. This is an important skill and it's part of the what? ECC of evaluating yourself and figuring out how well you're doing and what you might need help with. All right, let's check out this chat, chat, chat box. Oh, I'm seeing some threes. I'm seeing some twos, perfect. All right, campers, you guys did fabulous. I am so, so impressed with how much Luca said one, but he did well. You know what? That is great. We have Marley has a two. That's perfectly okay. Elijah has a three. You guys did wonderful today. We are so happy with how well you are doing. So we want you to spend the rest of your afternoon going outside enjoying it, making sure you get those items for your nature scavenger hunt and campers. I'm going to be back tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon with my hat on. I can't wait to see your hats too. Bye. Bye. Uh-oh, everyone, this is teacher Robin from the background. Leanne has her mic muted. So all we see is her super cool beach and we just see a pretty lady talking to us. So now we've got Leanne to come on and to say goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ranger Annie, Ranger Carrie. See, even I can forget something sometimes. We all have issues. Okay, thank you all for joining us today. We had a great time getting us prepped for camping. We will be back again tomorrow. There will be an email headed your way with information about the extension activity. And if you would like an opportunity to share photos and pictures with us, feel free to also share the permissions form. Hope you all have a great afternoon. Bye. Bye all. See you tomorrow, campers.